The way that GA4 handles filtering has changed radically compared to what we are already familiar with in Universal. In this video, we're not going to try to answer the question whether it's better or worse. We're just going to try to make things easier for you. So if we go to the browser and we go to the admin section of our GA4 property, the, in the data settings section, there is a tab called data filters. And uh, it seems quite easy to create a filter by clicking on the namesake button. Then we go to the internal traffic, for example. We can name our filter INT number one. We want to exclude the traffic. Traffic type is internal. We're going to leave the filter state in testing. That means the GA4 is going to let the events go through into the GA4 data warehouse, but they're going to be tagged with a parameter test data filter name and it's going to have the value of the data filter name that you actually assign here. So yeah, we can create that filter and it's targeting internal traffic. It says it's testing, but the problem is that the action of creating a filter is not finished here because you have to go to the data stream and then there are quite a few loops that you need to jump through in order to actually tell GA4 what is the internal traffic. So you need to configure tag settings. Then when this window pops up, you need to extend the list of settings and then find internal traffic. And only in this tab here, you can say these are the rules. I'm saying, uh, yeah, this is EU headquarters. Traffic type value is internal. And let's say IP address equals, you know, some number like I don't know, 10, 16, 21.4.13. And uh, yeah, that's, for example, my IP address. I create that rule and it says, okay, EU headquarters is at that particular IP address. Of course, it's not a real address. It's just uh, the numbers of starting lineup for the Sacramento Kings uh, 2002 generation, which was brutally ripped off in the, in the playoffs. If you watched an NBA, you will know what I'm talking about. But now we can go back and see, okay, our internal traffic is defined and this filter started working. Again, it's passing the traffic through, but all the events that happen from this IP address will have that custom parameter test data name equal to what is your filter name. In one of our videos about GA4 measurement ID, I mentioned that since GA4 measurement ID is a public string of uh, letters and numbers, it makes actually your data warehouse vulnerable because anybody can edit their website and you won't be able to stop the data flowing in. But what you can do is actually you can uh, filter out the data from the domains or subdomains or whatever you don't want to be in there. So I'm going to show you now how is that done. So for example, we are here in the events report of engagement and yeah, we can see there is a nice line chart and then there are bars, this beautiful table down here that counts all the events that came in. But what if I told you that these numbers here are actually not what you think they are because they can be polluted and uh, here is how you can find that out. You can simply click on add a filter here and say, okay, I want to pass through only events that come from a particular host name. I advise everyone to do this from time to time because in this drop down, you will see all the domains that send events to your GA4 data warehouse. So in case of uh, data driven new, seems pretty clear. Yeah, there is one here that actually I don't like. That's the domain that I, in fact, installed GA4, this particular measurement ID, only to test it. And if I said include only that one, let's see what happens. Yeah, it shows only a couple of events on January 5th, which is the date that I played with it. But, for example, if anyone wanted to implement your Google Analytics 4 measurement ID, which they can see in the source code of your website, you would see that data flowing in.
So you uh, do a filter and then set host name and basically choose all the domains that you want included. So yeah, I would say, for example, data driven new or Jeffoletics or DDU.ai, but there are some here, you see there's a web cache and stuff like that, that I don't want to see in there. If you want to make that change permanent, you would customize the report. And then in this menu here, you would add a filter and do the same thing, you know, find the host name here. I don't know why this dropdown keeps running away from me. And then say, okay, exclude, for example, elastic.rs. That's it. And then this change will be permanent. I can save this report. As a matter of fact, I'm going to save it to this report. I don't want that data pollution to remain. If you had a problem with subdomains, let's take a look at DDU uh, rollout property, which includes all the hits of all the data driven new websites out there even though some of them are for members only and uh, students and stuff like that. For example, we see that there were 87,000 page views in the previous period. And if I said, give me only the ones that are from the host name, I want to actually exclude. Let's say I exclude. This is the members subdomain. This is the students. These are students. I don't want to see this, this and that here. This is a promotional website. Yeah, I could have excluded simply. Never, never mind. For demonstrational purposes, this is enough. I apply it and it says, okay, 57,000 pages. So practically we lost about 40% of the page views in the rollout property. So that's the way how you exclude traffic from your subdomains that you don't want to see in your reports. If you remember what I said previously about making this exclusion permanent, you would practically go to the customize report icon and then make a filter permanent here and then save the report, either this one or you would create a new report and then it would be in the library. There is one more thing I wanted to show you regarding filtering and that's how you deal with developer traffic. So again, you would go into the admin section then under data settings, choose data filters, create a new filter, but this time we pick developer traffic, exclude, choose as an operation, leave it at testing mode. We set a name for the filter and create the filter. Google Analytics does everything else automatically. They actually evaluate whether the debug parameter for any event is equal to true and if it is then if your filter is in the testing state it will pass the data through but it will be tagged so to speak if you want to find out more about the threat that uh, your ga4 measurement id being public poses to your uh, data warehouse and basically to the pollution of your data please find the link in the uh, i'm not sure if it's in in the description of this video or in a pinned comment and uh, if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Talk soon. Bye-bye.